Hey everyone, this is Code Black 387 and wait, this ain't an MW2, this is actually an old game, Half-Life 2, and I actually got the game for my birthday, which was April 28th, if anybody needed to know that, and uh, the thing about it is, is that I was searching today and up to July 4th, Steam keeps putting on all these sales, including a sale like you can get every 2K game made for the PC or something for like 90 bucks, so... Um, but today they ended up having a special deal on Half-Life 2 and made it, um, I think it's like $3.40. But I already had the game, obviously, I said I got it for my birthday. Um, I got the entire orange box for my birthday, and pretty much every game in it is good. I like, I mainly got it for Half-Life and Team Fortress 2, and Half-Life has definitely proven to be, uh, um, up to the hype that I had for it. Team Fortress 2 as well. Portal, I didn't think it was going to be that great, and obviously I really don't like it that much. I don't even think I've completed the game. I think I am in Test Chamber 19, though. I don't know why, I just haven't finished it. Um, yeah, Portal really wasn't that great in my opinion. If anybody wants to see a video for that, though, I'll put it up, because obviously people like me are getting bored of Modern Warfare 2 and the Call of Duty series in general. Um, I'm starting to play. I uh, will start getting back into like Battlefield 2, Bad Company 2, and all that. By the way, when I say Battlefield 2, I mean the 2005 PC exclusive version of Battlefield 2, um, which still, I think, in a lot of people's eyes, remains the number one game in all the Battlefield series. But, uh, anyway, oh, this is actually kind of a funny moment, and this is, uh, I run over to turn this thing off, and, uh, these guys start walking back toward it, and they just get cut in half, because the AI was pretty stupid in this. And then this is the actual funny part, is I come over here, and I'm trying to get the razor blade thingy over there. And I come to kill this guy, and he jumps right into that thing, so, like I said, the AI in these games was not too great. And if you haven't seen it yet, or haven't really been paying attention much. This game has quite a bit of gore, so <laughs> I think it's already past the point where you would have seen that. So, late warning: if you don't like gore, don't watch this video. <laughs> but uh, this game actually, um, before I played this game, Super Mario Sunshine was my favorite single-player game of all time. And if anybody wants to know why that was my pick, is because. I was originally raised in Florida, and uh, ever since that we left there, I've always wanted to go back, and Super Mario Sunshine has like the tropical environment to it, so it kind of just reminds me a lot of Florida over any other game that I have. So, yeah, that's kind of the reason why Super Mario Sunshine has made it to the top list of my games. But after I played this game, this game definitely probably ties it. I would not say that beats it just for the simple fact of why I like Super Mario Sunshine. But uh, this game definitely would tie it because, I mean, to this day, it, this game came out in 2004. And to this day, I think it has remained one of, if not the top PC single-player PC game of all time. There's some games that are multiplayer I think might beat it, like maybe Counter-Strike or something. But, uh... This game definitely is probably the best single player game I've ever played, tied with Super Mario Sunshine, and it has remained in a lot of the community sizes one of the top for a very good reason. This game is extremely fun. If you uh, have never played it, I would definitely suggest getting it. And I think the orange box is on 360 as well, even though Half Life 2, I think, was PC exclusive when it came out. I'm not sure about that though, so. Anyway, as you can tell throughout most of this, I've been kind of uh, just running around with the gravity gun, and with that gun, you can pick up something and launch it at the enemies, anything in the environment, and I've been picking up like these razor blade chainsaw things. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. can't remember. I don't know exactly what somebody would call them, so. Um, yeah, the other thing about this game is that it's much of a, th is that it's a big thinking game. Uh, especially in this uh, level, which, this is Ravenholm, and it is probably one of the most notable levels in the entire game. Um, of all levels in this game, this was probably the one that scared people the most, and got it the name for a horror game, because, 
I mean, something about this level is just makes people scared. I don't get too scared at this level. Really, the only thing that scares me are like it's not even in this video it's later on it's like you have like these big guys that have all these spider venom things around them if anybody's played the game they'll know what I'm talking about and uh, if one of those spider things hits you then it brings you down to one life so I kinda just hate those things um, but uh yeah the gravity gun is an extremely fun gun to use and it's pretty much all I've been using I've used the crowbar a little bit and the handgun but that's about it um in this game, he actually had quite a few weapons. I think, like, almost ten or something. Let me think. You had two in every slot, and there are five slots. So, yeah, that would be ten weapons. First of all, you had Gravity Gun and Crowbar, which are, like, the ultimate Half-Life weapons. Um, these weapons, pretty much everybody who plays the Half-Life series really, series really enjoys the weapons, just for some reason. Gravity Gun, as you can see, can be quite a bit of fun, just blowing enemies in half and knocking them off stairs and you can also throw explosive barrels at them <laughs> um, just overall this gun is an extremely fun gun to use the crowbar is just fun to use it's the first thing that you've ever it was the first weapon in all the half-life series the introduction weapon and here I'm trying to get health and another razor blade thing um, that would be the crowbar and those are the one. Those are the weapon slot one, and the weapon slot two is handgun, which gives you an M9 USP kind of combo handgun. <laughs> um, and then the other one is the Magnum, which is almost always a one-shot kill. Um, then you have the third one, which is like the automatic weapons, which would include the submachine gun and the assault rifle. And somehow the submachine gun has a grenade launcher, I don't get that. And the assault rifle has like the coolest grenade launcher ever made. It's like ultimate noob too, but... Um, the fourth weapon slot is single shotguns, which is shotgun and crossbow sniper rifle thing. You wouldn't see this in, see it in this video, but that's kind of what it is. Then um, you have the fifth weapon slot which has grenades and RPGs so uh yeah hold up be right back okay sorry about that my uh dad came in and uh interrupted a little bit but uh pretty much oh yeah these are the spider things I was talking about if they hit you then you uh end up going down to just one health and there's an enemy later on that has like ten of them on him or something but uh Pretty much, this game is mostly just a thinking game combined with quite a bit of action, and uh, I would definitely suggest it as a game if you enjoy FPS games and thinking games. Like I said, I'll probably be putting up different videos because I'm getting a little bit bored of Modern Warfare 2 and the Call of Duty series in general. So, um, yeah, this is coming to the end of the video. Like I said, this game is incredible, like one of the best single player games I've ever played among obviously tied for the best is what I said and it's definitely in the title of one of the top PC games ever so anyway that's the end of this video and uh, hope you liked it bye